<coughs> Can you imagine that I had to learn a new camera system just for this commercial? Nah. So the story went like this. Hey Dream Duo, we were wondering, can you make us a commercial for our new Viltrox 75mm f1.2 lens? Oh hell yeah, let's do it! Awesome, glad to hear that. We actually already sent you the lens. So we were wondering, do you have like a Fujifilm X-T4 or something like that? Uh, wait, Fuji? Yeah, we're actually planning on releasing this lens for the Fujifilm cameras. You know, X-Mount? Oh yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Of course we have used the Fuji camera before. Of course we have used the Fuji camera before. Fake it till you make it, am I right? Well, to be honest with you, we had never even touched the Fuji film camera before. I started doubting myself. Can I really master a tool? in a single day that usually takes people years to get comfortable with. Am I really capable of doing that? <laughs> of course I am! We're late, as always. Well what made this experience even more funky was the fact that I had to film a massive project in New York right before the production. We have never been this close to freedom before. So, not only was I not properly prepared for this, but I had to learn how to take great photos and videos in a single day before the production. Actually, Fujifilm cameras are pretty simple to use. It took me around 5 hours of research on YouTube and I already felt pretty comfortable with the menu and layout of the camera. However, the real test was still ahead of me. Our main goal was to make a dynamic, fun-to-watch commercial for Viltrox. We had to test out the lens in different scenarios, capture a bunch of photos and videos as well as show the performance of the lens. It sounds pretty simple, right? But as I mentioned previously, the biggest issue was the fact that we had to use a Fujifilm camera, but didn't even have the time to properly test out the camera nor the lens. Off to a great start! I'm trying to figure out the settings because I don't like how it feels now. But as soon as we arrived at the studio and did a couple of test shots before the actual production began, we understood that working with the Fujifilm X-T4 files is super smooth and exposing F-Log is as simple as it gets. But I mean, of course, the Viltrox 75mm f1.2 lens made everything look dreamy and we didn't have to worry about our environment too much since everything was completely blurred out in the background. Even though each scene was completely different, the models only had to stand around somewhere, sit, look around, smile and sometimes make a serious face. Nothing too demanding. But since I was kinda sluggish with the Fujifilm camera and oftentimes had to stop recording because the camera had some weird glitches, still, in the end we did manage to capture four different scenes in a span of four hours and that made me very happy. Whilst most of the scenes weren't anything special, there was this awesome wall covered with light panels. And the shots we got there were so unique. I've never seen a studio in Latvia that has these kind of walls. Lately, all of the studio shoots we've had have been a huge success and I think I know why. It is because I always try to create a chill, fun atmosphere so that no one has to rush anywhere, everyone is vibing, listening to good music and of course, lots of coffee and snacks. What can I say? If you take care of your crew, they will always take care of you and help you in any way they can. So, moral of the story, just don't be a dick. Hello guys, this is a Viltrox lens which I like very much. Why? I like because it is written in English with small Viltrox and then we have text 
which is pro pro means pro resolutions for pro master people and you guys are pro just as me what else is very good about this is 1.2 this means you will get everything super nice and sharp bokeh is like my world and you can imagine this is very heavy if you drop this nothing will happen but if you drop this on someone's head you can save your life <laughs> amazing lens use it every day just like i did amazing lens <laughs> <laughs> By now this camera started to feel like an extension of my body and I was ready to put myself in an uncontrolled environment. To make my models stand out from one another, I decided to put a lot of emphasis on the outfits. And that's why I asked my friend George to go out shopping and spend a whopping 200 euros on a coat and a hat. But hey, you gotta admit, he looks dope. I think just by looking at George you can already see that I was trying to reference the very first scene in the morning next day was a failure because uh, it just feels a bit too empty. I was at least hoping for some moody clouds but I guess we got unlucky. After spending around an hour there we decided to visit another location not too far away from there. A modern looking museum. And since it has a lot of leading lines all over the place, I knew we would at least get a couple of good shots. But this location ended up saving the whole day pretty much, because the shots we captured were so good. I have always called myself a terrible photographer, because I just don't like my photography style at all. But even I was shocked at how good some of these shots turned out. After that, I went home to get my well-deserved sleep. Psych, you're a filmmaker, since when do you get to sleep? Nah, that's not what happened. I went back home, rested for an hour, and went back into the call to shoot another scene. Yay! This time I met up with Therese, and our main goal was to get some moody city shots, as well as test out the technical stuff for the lens, such as bokeh, autofocus in both video and photo, and low light performance. The test we did took way more time than we initially thought it would, so as always, we ran out of light. Yeah, I was pissed. But then I remembered that Viltrox also sent us their RGB tube lights, which we had to somehow implement into the commercial. Dude, the shots we captured after it got dark, I was so happy. Not only did we get more than we had hoped for, we also had a lot of fun and found a bit of time to have a lightsaber battle with the tube lights. This is the moment when I realized I should always carry these tiny tube lights with me because they are incredible. <laughs> yeah. I was looking forward to the third day. However, something went horribly wrong. So we had rented out warrior armor with a sword and a shield, but uh, the guys we rented it from basically ghosted us. That wasn't very nice. But we also didn't want to cancel our shoot because the deadline was coming and it was coming fast. We decided to get some simple shots in forest to test out the weather ceiling on the lens, get a lot of behind the scenes shots of me using the Fujifilm X-T4 with the Viltrox 75mm lens and take a couple of bangers for our model Victoria. Safe to say, the weather ceiling on this lens is fantastic. Right after the forest shoot we had to go back to the city and ding ding, you guessed it, get even more city shots. Woo. Here I also asked Eva to join us for a bigger variety of shots and even though we only spent around an hour there, at least we got something usable. I have been to this location millions of times, but with the 75mm lens I managed to get new angles I previously had unnoticed, so nice. Last day was the most fun because we decided to film paintball. I had never played paintball before this so I was beyond excited. We had such a fun time just running around and doing whatever came to our minds. This didn't even feel like work. Oh and yes, I just had to include this cheesy transition in the commercial because why not? I just love how I always try to come up with these ideas for commercials, not because I think it's the best way to test out the lens, but because it is an opportunity for my friends and I to get together for something fun. And it's usually these silly and fun scenes that look the most epic in a video anyway. Last two years surprised me. We did a lot of travels and different projects, but what shocked me the most is the fact that I decided to change my filmmaking style completely. Before this change, I was following many creators on YouTube and getting my inspiration only from their work, but I quickly noticed that something was wrong. 
It felt as if I couldn't come up with original ideas anymore. Every time I sent ideas to my client, I was most of the time referencing them from videos I've seen on YouTube from other filmmakers. And every day, I felt this nasty feeling inside me that I wasn't doing enough. I went on YouTube, I saw people doing these amazing projects, getting sponsored by these big brands. Every idea I came up with was associated with something I had previously seen on YouTube. And it was mentally exhausting. This is where I knew I had to change something. And I decided to quit watching 99% of content on YouTube related to filmmaking. I only continued watching YouTubers who really inspired me to think outside the box in my craft. Honestly, this was the best decision I could have ever made. I started creating more films for myself. I didn't feel the pressure of not knowing what's happening on YouTube anymore. I stopped comparing myself to other filmmakers. And best of all, I quickly noticed how my filmmaking style changed. I began putting more thought into my composition, lighting, sound design, and even shot a short film that I am extremely proud of because this was an idea I thought I would not be able to turn into reality but my team and I did. My own story turned into a short film. Oh man, just saying this warms up my heart. All in all, the progress I was experiencing in my craft was incredible. Even filming and editing product commercials have become more fun for me because I always try to put some of my own twists on these commercials and companies say that they love that we do that. So why am I telling you all of this? We need to be inspired to create. And it's amazing how through other people's work, we oftentimes get this urge to go out and make something for ourselves. But I think it's so much more important that you have the ability to inspire yourself through your own work. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I know what steps you need to take in order to achieve that. But that is your own journey and only you can find the answer to that question. Sometimes it's not as deep or difficult as we think it is, right? For me, the answer was very simple. I needed to get off of social media and spend more time with myself, with my own thoughts and ideas. I needed to stop comparing my work to other people's work. Thank you so much for watching this video. You guys are awesome. Hopefully you had an amazing day today and you know the drill. Peace out.